Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. You can, because of the greater one inside you, you can overcome whatever is in front of you today. I know the enemy, he he's, uh, likes to... Uh, Practice what I call the pile-up technique. You know, just keep trying to pile up worries and concerns and fears on you until you just feel like giving up and, and quitting. But he's a liar. And uh, things are never as bad as the enemy makes them out to be. I've found he's always, well, he's a liar. That's an exaggerator, right? He's always exaggerating the, you know, how bad the situation is. And uh, it tries to get you to forget how big God inside you is. So you can overcome. There's answers. You can come out of it a lot quicker even than you thought too. You, it's amazing how you can go from just seeing no hope at all to being completely free in a short amount of time. And, and the things that happen just seem like a bad dream that happened to somebody else. That's what God will do. And that's what faith in God will do. So let's uh, agree together. Let's pray and release our faith to get exactly what we need in our spirit and minds and lives to help bring that to pass today. Father, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to know you, to feed on your words, to be ministered to by your spirit. We ask for utterance and anointing. We ask for the uh, eyes and ears and heart to see and hear and receive. And we purpose to walk in the light of it. Thank you for doing great things in our life. Thank you that you're greater than any problem that we could ever face. And we confess it so. And we thank you for the victory in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for the victory. We're thanking him in advance. Um, Hebrews 10, if you'd look at it again, Hebrews 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. If you look that up, where, where that's quoting that from, it says by his faith. So uh, the just will live by his faith or by her faith. But if any man, that's in italics, if anybody draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. We're not of them that draw back to perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We're not going backwards. We're going forward. We're not quitting. We're overcoming. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must, it's, it's not optional, must believe that he is. And you must believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You must believe that God exists and that he's God or you know, why even pray? You must believe that, but you must go beyond that and believe something about his character, about his nature. God won't leave you hanging. <laughs> you know what I mean by that? You, you reach out to him. What does the Bible say? Draw near to God and he'll leave you hanging. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you, you go to high five God, you know what's going to happen? <laughs> he, he's going to meet you. Is that, is that what he said? Draw near to him and what? He will respond to faith. Now, not, not to fear, but to faith. He responds. And you must believe that he is a rewarder. Reward is something good. So, you, you know, Brother Or Roberts popularize the phrase, uh, something good is going to happen to you today. And uh, uh, some people, you know, act like they didn't like that phrase. 
But it's obviously he knew something about the Lord. He's, he's believing this right here, isn't he? He's believing God is, that he exists, that he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, but also he's a rewarder that if you'll seek him, something good's going to come to you. If you'll obey him, something good's going to happen to you, right? So let, let's, let's, let's join Brother Oral in this. Say it out loud, something good, something good. is happening, it's happening. For, me. for me today. today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, how can you know that? How can you say that? Well, I can read. I can read. And God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His will is always the same. He's no respecter of persons. What he did for one, what he did for all these in this 11th chapter of, of Hebrews, he does for us today. Same thing, same spirit of faith, same God, same faithful God. So we saw Abel, we saw Noah, we saw Abraham, Sarah, we saw Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. We've talked about them. And we're down to verse 23 now. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid or hidden three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, or we said that that could be translated uh, a beautiful child or no ordinary. I, I think the word special could be used here. They, they saw something special about him. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. The faith that came in their hearts helped them to overcome the fear of them all being slaughtered by not by failing to obey Pharaoh's command to kill all the male children. And so we, we spent some time talking about how that strong faith overcomes all fear. And that faith works by love. How, how can I be so strong in faith? Well, faith works by love. It's what we just got through looking at. Not only do I believe God is real, that he exists, and that I believe he's, if he's God, he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful. I believe in his love for me. We talked about that in a previous class, how we believe we're going to make it. Not just because we do everything right, but because of his love and faithfulness to us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll never let us down. He'll always be there for us. And if we won't quit him, we're going to make it because he's not going to quit us. And they obviously became convinced that God would protect them in this situation in the middle of this country with this oppressive regime, killing all the children. This is, this is terrible. And yet... They kept him day and night, day and night, day and night, three months. But apparently there came a time when they knew we, we've, got to, we've got to get him out of here. And, uh, you know, living by faith, notice the phrase, the just shall live by faith, the just shall walk by faith. Every day is a new day. You can't separate living by faith from hearing from the Lord. How does faith come? By hearing. Being led by the Spirit. So if the Lord tells you, okay, you got to get him out of the house today. Yeah, but Lord, you said we could keep him. Yeah, and you have. Right? <laughs> but when the Lord says you got to get him out of the house, you can't have faith to keep him now. Are y'all with me, friends? You can only have faith to obey God now. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of this, but it all flows together. So uh, skip down to the 29th verse. And it says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do or attempting to do, were drowned. This has been a source of confusion for a number of folks. They see somebody do something and get a miracle. And to see somebody else try to do the same thing and, and die or fail. Well, what's the difference? They did the same thing. Well, these, these guys did the same thing, right? The Israelites passed through the middle of the Red Sea on dry ground. The Egyptians uh, endeavored to pass through the Red Sea on the middle of dry ground, in the middle of the Red Sea on, on dry ground. 
Why such completely different outcomes? Because faith comes by hearing. Right? Faith is not a matter you just decide, I'm going to do something and believe to do it. No, if you're counting on God to help you, you have to have heard from Him about this. Then you can trust Him to do what He said. You know, it'd be like, kind of like me, you know, if you say, well, I'm, I'm going to believe that Brother Keith comes and does my laundry <laughs> because, you know, I have faith and all things are possible to him that believes. Well, uh, don't wait on it <laughs> because you, you can't have faith. Oh, yes, I can. I'm believing it. No, the only way you could have faith in me to do your laundry was if I told you. I would do it. And you believed I'm not a liar and I have the ability to do it and I'm faithful to keep my word, then you could have faith. You could trust and say, and somebody said, well, he's not going to come to your laundry. Oh yeah, he told me that he was. So you could believe it, right? You could believe it. But if you're just going to try to reach out in the air and grab this and say, I'm just going to believe this to show people how powerful I am in faith. And whether Brother Keith wants to or not, he'll wind up over there doing my laundry. Well, no, you're trying to show off. Your motive is wrong. And you don't have anything to base your faith on. Faith is not just believing something out of nowhere. Faith in me can only be based on what I told you. Faith in God can only be based on what he told you, which is why Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes, how? Not by wishing, not by wanting, not by needing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the anointed word, uh, that's, that's Christ there, the anointed word. And so you, uh, uh, the Israelites had faith to cross the Red Sea because God told them. When they got down there, uh, you know, it looks like they're in a bad place. They're in the proverbial between the rock and hard place. <laughs> they got the sea in front of them. They got Pharaoh and the army closing down on them. They're in a bad spot. And uh, Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord said, what are you crying to me for? Go forward. <laughs> and so... And again, you see how faith is not passive. He had to speak. He had to reach that rod out. And praise God, when they stepped that way, it, it split. And so because they're obeying God, they had faith to do it. Well, here comes the Egyptians behind them. We're going to do the same thing. But what had God told the Egyptians? Did he tell them to go through the Red Sea? No. You know what? He had been telling them for months, let my people go. So the only thing they could have had faith in God for was that they could let the people go and God would take care of them. They can't have faith to go through the midst of the Red Sea because they didn't hear that from God. They heard something else. So they're actually rebelling against what God told them because he told them, let my people go. And they're not letting his people go. They're trying to chase them and get them. They're rebelling against the Word of God. You can see why they got in the middle of this and the walls, water collapsed and they all drowned and they all perished. And this you've seen even with, among people that are called themselves faith people, word people. You'll see somebody said, the Lord told me to do this and they did it and had a miracle. And somebody says, well, I'm going to do that too. And you'll, you'll hear people sometimes saying, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to quit taking my medication. Uh, I'm going to throw my glasses away. I'm going to do this or that. Well, look, if throwing your glasses away would, would correct your vision, uh, <laughs> right? If, if not taking your medicine would, would make a healing manifest, then uh, uh, that's all you'd have to do. Boom. It, it happened everywhere. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Uh, you shouldn't do anything that you didn't hear from the Lord. Right? Can you see this? For you to do. And he knows where your faith is. And he, he's going to tell different people different things. I've, uh, I've known situations of people that had strong faith in different areas. And the Lord told, spoke to them and said, get up right now and go to the doctor. 
But someone says, what? Well, can, don't they believe in healing? They sure do. Well, don't they have faith? Yes, but our faith's at different places at different times. And they, and, and they weren't going to go initially. But he told them real strong, get up right now. Make an appointment. Get over there. And when they got there, they began to check their vitals. They were in a serious condition. If they'd have waited another day or so, they'd probably died. They didn't know it. They didn't know what was going on. The Lord did. And so they were able to get help, lived scores of years after that. Uh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But if the Lord tells you, uh, go over there and do this, and you say, well, no, I'm just going to sit here and believe God, you can't. <laughs> you can't ignore what he told you. Uh, you can't say, so I'm just going to sit here and believe this and do nothing. No, when he told you to do that, the only thing you can have faith in him to do is what he told you. You can act on that, and in that, you'll see miracles. So, uh, faith is not just believing anything. Faith in God is believing what he told you. Faith in other people is believing what they told you. Uh, back up, if you would. Verse 23 again, they hid him for the three months. They saw he was special. They were not afraid. Somebody say, not afraid. Not, not, afraid. A, not afraid of the king's commandment. And so uh, we mentioned it before, but I think it's, it's worth uh, referring to again. Uh, something happened that they knew he couldn't be hid. If you look at the other... Um, Acts, we'll look at that in a little bit. You'll see Acts and Exodus 2 where it describes how that they somehow know they came to the knowing but we can't, we can't hide him anymore. And um, you know, while I'm talking about this, I'll just touch on a little bit further. You've read the book of Acts perhaps and you'll notice that Paul and his company, and this was true with other of the apostles and disciples, there were times that when something was going on, a persecution, they would get out of town. I mean, just believe, basically run. Uh, did you know the same thing with Jesus? There were times that uh, he just slipped through the crowd and got out of there. And there were other times where Paul stayed and got persecuted. And there were even times he stayed and got stoned. And there were times... When that time after he got stoned, he got up when God raised him up, went back into the same place where he got stoned. Uh, now, how does you reconcile that? Times when you stay, when it looks like you should. Times when you get out of town and go. You know, um, reading the book of Acts, it says that they'd get to a certain juncture in place uh, and think about ministering to these people over in this area. And the Lord would say, no. No. I thought you said go into all the world. Yeah, but you're not the whole body of Christ. You can't go everywhere. Where are you supposed to go? Another place they thought about going and preaching and said the Holy Spirit forbade them. I said no. So whether you go, whether you stay, people say, well, I'm just, I'm just going to trust God that, that nothing happens. Well, that's great unless he told you to get out of town. <laughs> Y'all with me, friends? Then if the Lord said, get out of here tonight, you can't have faith to stay and be protected. Now, I know a lot of folks don't like to hear this because it puts responsibility on us to seek God, to pray, to hear from him. But this is reality. You can't have faith beyond what he's saying to you. And uh, like they kept him for three months and they had faith to keep him. And not fear the king's commandment. But at the end of that three months. Uh, his mom. His dad. I don't know who all. But they just knew. We can't hide him anymore. They knew. We got to get him out of here. And when they knew that. They can't keep believing. They're going to be okay. Do I go to the doctor? Do I not go to the doctor? Do I have the the surgery, do I not have the surgery? Do I take the medication? Do I not take the medication? The answer to a thousand and one questions in life is, <laughs> oh, y'all have heard this before. <laughs> they said, be led. 
Be led by what? Not just by anything. Be led by the Spirit of the living God that's on the inside of you. Nothing will take the place of a regular, daily, living communion with the Spirit of God who's in us. Always checking. Don't you remember the Bible said, um, trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. In all your ways, what does that mean? All your ways, that means morning, noon, and night. You're checking in with Him. You're, you're checking your, your heart. And I don't care if you've done something the same way a hundred times in the past. You know, the Bible said to David, he'd gone out to war time after time after time, but every time before he'd go, he'd say he would inquire of the Lord. He would check. He would ask. And it's good that he did because there were times the Lord told him to do completely unconventional things. Even though he had success doing it a certain way many times, every day is a new day. And thank God we don't have to just rely on what people call luck. Uh, forget about all that. We don't have to rely just on our wits. I don't care how smart you are. You're not smart enough <laughs> to cover all of that. And certainly you don't know the future. But we've got somebody in us. The greater one inside us, he knows everything. He knows the plan that God has for us. He knows, he's aware of all the traps and tricks of the adversary and the enemy. And there's no substitute for us seeking the Lord daily. You don't have to you know, necessarily be prostrating the floor for, for five hours to get this. You can be going along in your car. And just turn off the radio maybe and just check your heart a little bit. And when you think about that, be open to him and say, Lord, which, which, what should I do on this? Where should I go? And always be checking. Always be checking. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Because you can't have real faith on anything other than what he told you. Can you see that, class? You can only have faith for what he told you. So should I do this? Should I do that? Well, we know all things are possible with God. All things are possible to him that believes. But our faith is at different places. And the Lord knows where our heart is, where our faith is today. And he'll tell you the exact right thing to do. And when you do that, you can believe him. You'll have favor. Things will work. Uh, things will be expedited, uh, th you, you'll prosper in it, and you keep growing and developing, he's liable to lead you a different way next year or the next because you're developing, you, you're growing. But um, you don't just get hard-headed and go, I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to believe God. Well, believe him to do what? What did he tell you? <laughs> uh, he is the big boss. How many know God is the big boss? The Lord, he's the king of kings. He, he's the Lord of Lords, and we should continually be checking in with him, submitting to him, going his way. So when they, they, they just knew, we can't have faith to keep uh, keeping him here at the house. So they made him a little tiny boat. <laughs> they made him a basket, and they took uh, slime and pitch, and made it, they waterproofed it. And they put him in there, and they covered him up. And put him on the river. You know, they were supposed to have thrown him in the river three months ago with no basket. But they kept him. But they're still in faith. And they sent him sailing down the river. And his uh, sister, Miriam, she couldn't take it. She, she had to follow. And she followed and followed and watched him and it would have been interesting to see. Maybe we can watch the video. I don't know later <laughs> of what happened. I mean, no God was involved in this, right? And so the crocodiles didn't get him and hippopotamus didn't get him. And I mean, this, this river is a dangerous place. And the swells and the eddies and all that. And he, and he winds up in some, uh, we'd call them weeds or rushes or, and just happens to be at the same time Pharaoh's daughter comes down. No, it was a setup. Mm -hmm. And uh, they noticed him 
and brought the basket over and opened it up, Pharaoh's daughter, and she sees him and he cries. And boy, something got a hold of her heart. And she said, uh, you know, this, but she saw that he's special. And Miriam, his sister, pops up and goes, uh, oh, look, there's a baby. <laughs> of course, you know, this baby's obviously uh, nursing and, and says, uh, do you want me to go find uh, a woman, a mother to nurse this, this baby? Of course, you know, there were a number of mothers, uh, Israelite mothers that had had to give up their babies and were capable of nursing. And so, and, and uh, the Pharaoh's daughter said, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So she runs home and gets mama. <laughs> Moses' mama brings her, and I guess they pretend like, oh, wow, what a pretty baby. You know? <laughs> can you nurse this baby for me? Yeah, I can. I can. Yes, I can. And paid her, the Bible said, paid them, paid her wages to take and nurse this baby. And then when the child is old enough, came into Pharaoh's palace. And uh, these people, the Pharaoh was considered a living God. You talk about opulence. You talk about affluence. You, you talk about power. Um, they had people for everything. And all at once, he's a prince. He's a prince in the house of Pharaoh. <laughs> and that's where he grew up. And that's how he grew up. Until he was 40 years old. Somebody say 40. That's, that's, a long, that's, your, that's a lifetime. A lot of people's mind, right? And so he was even, at one point when somebody saw him, didn't know who he was, they called him an Egyptian. Well, he didn't look like an Egyptian. He, he dressed like an Egyptian. He was taught in all the ways of, of Egypt. But we're going to see in our next class... <laughs> that he chose to leave all of that and follow God, and he did it by faith. Hallelujah. It takes faith to go God's way. Well, that's it for the class today. Everybody said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome this world by faith. We're strong in faith giving glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll see you next time in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside of me. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 702 7390.